Wonderful to meet you. Uh, my name is Andrew Davey and I've got this opportunity to be on the online prosperity show uh, with the man, the myth, the legend, and I'm really looking forward to uh, having this conversation. So I look forward to meeting you in person. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got the digital nomad himself, Andrew. Andrew, how are you doing, my man? Fantastic, mate. Better, better when I talk to you. I mean, how can you not bounce off this level of energy, mate? I, I don't know how you do it. Consistently. <laughs> and you've been doing these since 4 o'clock this morning, am I right? <laughs> Sorry? And you've been doing these since four o'clock this morning, am I right? Yes. Oh, you <laughs> saw my calendar, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, I think you are the last video that I'm going to be doing today. But besides that, we have to, um, you know, figure out how we can actually help people uh, be doing, have a business that's actually profitable and enjoyable. And if you don't put in the energy and if you don't put in the work and the expertise of people like yourself, how are people going to learn? Now, obviously, Andrew, you going um, out of your way to train the youth of today of, you know, you know, the dangers and the possibilities of what um, life holds in front of them. And you're doing that outside of Singapore. Tell us a little bit about your story and how you ended up in Singapore and what it is that you're actually doing these days. Absolutely. I guess the, uh, the journey of my 20s, when I used to have a, a slightly different haircut, mate, a little bit fuller on the fringe, um, <laughs> I, used to, uh, I, I used to be so driven, I guess, you know, from the entrepreneurial spirit, you know, I, I had the, uh, the same, I guess, you know, that, that young enthusiasm of didn't want a boss, wanted to work for myself. And, and I had a business back then, which uh, my trade was actually a mechanic, you know, so I used to fix cars and, and, and do all that sort of stuff. And at 23 years of age, I just said, I can't do this anymore. I don't want a boss. And I went out there and I did it for myself. And it was, it was two years of real hard slog to build that up and to grow. And at the same time, always developing myself, you know, through Tony Robbins events and stuff like that as well. So it's so always had this, uh, this need, this want, this desire to be more of myself. And the way I knew how to direct it was in this business that I had. So, so I did really well out of that. And uh, I got to a point in 2009 where I achieved everything that I set out to do and I had this, this hollow victory. So, so I'll share this uh, because I believe it might be valuable to, to someone listening. And, and I guess it was the, the key for me was, you know, I had this vision from when I was a kid. I loved cars. You know, I was a mechanic, as you know, and, and I had this vision, you know, in business and, and everything I was doing. Like I had this, this dream, this goal to own a Ferrari. That was it. Like that was, it had to happen. And so, you know, I remember I was about 21, the first Tony Robbins event I ever went to, Unleashed the Power Within, and I, I come over and had this vision, and I put this picture of this, uh, this Ferrari, and I, I wrote down the date on or before the 11th, 12th, 2000, and I did all that stuff, all the stuff we taught, and, and, I, and I went at it, like, you know, just business and focus the 12, 14-hour days, and built it up, and I got to a point where I, I realized that goal, and the, the story's not about the goal for me. The story was about the, the realization of what was on the other side that, that I almost had to achieve that to realize something great. And, and my greatness is probably the biggest key and what I appreciated about myself. So, so I remember I'm left with this goal. Like I've bought this car and I'm over in Sydney. I'm from Perth, West Australia originally. I've gone over to Sydney. I'm in Marrickville and there's this big warehouse. There's cars there and I'm realizing this goal for the first moment. And I've been left with this thing. And the, the dealer at the time, Vince was his name. He's on the phone. He said, I'll be back in one moment. And he left me with this thing. And I sat in this car for the first time, like this huge, overwhelming realization. And the very first thought that came in my mind was, is this it? Is, is this all there is? It was almost this hollow victory. And, and I liken it to, uh, you know, to the coyote. You know, he catches the roadrunner. You know, like if he, if he ever actually caught it, what the hell does he do then? Like, you know, there's, there's no, uh, no sense of meaning and purpose. And, and so it was all about the money for me. And I realized there was something, something more. And, and I wasn't sure what that was. So I found myself in a place where it was a really interesting place where although all of that had been created, I actually sold that business. And I spoke, I got an opportunity to speak through a friend at, uh, at something called the Magic Moments Youth Leadership and Business Summit. And it's over there in Sydney. It's held every year. It's been held since 2009. And they said, what do you want to speak on? And to me, business excites me. Every, every aspect of the word business. But more importantly, I think when we talk about an entrepreneur, 
to me, it's not about an entrepreneur having to have a business, but it's the entrepreneurial spirit of creativity. And so that's what I chose to share in this moment, you know, in front of there was 150 kids there and I, I was atrocious. It was so bad prospect. Like I see you, mate, you're just owning your space and you're on that microphone and you know what to do. Man, I was bad. I was so bad. I remember getting off stage and just thinking, wow, that was horrible. I had no idea what I was doing. Yet I had all these kids coming up to me and one in particular, I just sense, you know, when you know someone wants to speak to you and you sense their presence. There was this young kid who was about 12 years old. And he was just standing over to the side and, and he came over to me and he, he said, I just wanted to thank you for what you shared. And well, I can't even remember what I said. You know, I just got up there and I, I think I had some slideshows. It was just such a buzz. And then he just wrapped his arms around me and he burst into tears. Like he literally just cried his eyes. And I, and I held this kid for about 10 minutes. He just wouldn't stop sobbing. And he said one thing that stayed with me since that I believe was the, you know, I guess life leaving you clues as to where you need to head. And he, and he said this to me, he said, you taught me that it's okay to dream. And I thought, wow, like that, that statement floored me. And so long story short, every year since then, I've been going back. I've been giving my time, even though I had, you know, traditional businesses, a cafe and all sorts of things in the background. Every year I made time to commit to, to going and, and, and spending time with these kids at this camp, which has grown and grown, you know, 300, 350 kids. Now there's kids from all over the world. And so, so I just felt there was something in it. And, and yet I hid away from that. You know, I, I guess I, I had fear of, you know, how do you make that a career or when it comes to speaking or anything like that. Uh, and it was all fear. It's all it was. And, uh, and so what I did at that point, um, it was, it was after a realization of, of coming to, I, I think, you know, whether you call it midlife class crisis, I don't know what it was. I went to this event and it was the year that I nearly didn't go. It was the year that I decided, you know what, I don't think I'm in a space to really give to these youth. You know, I'm not in a, in a space that's whole within myself. And so I remember I get a call from the director, Sharon's her name, and she rings me up and I've got the, the whole conversation planned in my head. Like, you know, I can't make it. You have to get someone else to do the entrepreneurial bit, which, you know, we take them through how to do a business plan and all this stuff. Like it's so much fun. And she gets on the phone and she goes, Andrew, we've got your ticket booked. You leave on this date. So I'm like, all right, done. All right. Well, how can I say no? Long story short, it's the place where I actually met my wife. So my wife and our son, who's, who's 16 now, he was actually an attendee at, uh, at the event. And they came all the way from Singapore. And my wife was crewing the event and we had this conversation and one thing led to another. And here I am, mate. Like I, you know, I, I just abandoned ship, burnt the boats and said, you know what? There's something big in this. And that was about a year ago. And I arrived in Singapore and you know, what's funny is I know nobody here. And literally all I did was grab my computer as a digital nomad. That's what we do. We connect with people and I just started sending emails out, sending emails. And I, I found myself in a place now to, to shorten the story for you. I found myself in a place now where we're running an event over here alongside one of the biggest promoters. And it's called Wealth Academy Teens, where we're teaching youth real life skills. You know, I guess when you look at financial skills and things that are going to sort of serve them in life alongside, you know, their academic results and, and going out into the world and, and exposing them to the world of entrepreneurship, you know, meaning how cool is it to have a business on the side? How cool is it to have something that you can create outside of what you're doing? And as well as that, uh, so as an example, I leave in 10 days to fly to Myanmar uh, for, for a 10-day tour and we go all around Myanmar to a school uh, where they want to teach uh, fundamentals of wealth, you know, learning about in this emerging middle class, uh, learning about things like social entrepreneurship and learning about how we can, we can really give them some substance and some understanding of this thing called money to really help them, I guess, understand what, what benefits they can have for their future and their life. Uh, so I still go back to Sydney every year. Um, at the moment now also through, like yourself, meeting all these people and having all these networks, it's also opened up a world where it's almost like a conduit in a way where I'm now finding all of these, these people that want to experience Australia. So we're organizing a camp in January where uh, there's over a hundred Chinese youth that are about to come over to experience uh, that, that magic moments event. We're, we're holding one in January and some kids from Vietnam that are looking to experience the one in July. And so it's, it's my whole world's opened up and wow. to me, it opens up because we have this ability just to connect with people. 
And that's why, you know, people like you, I see out there and I just think, wow, like, you know, just, just to connect with people, that's, that's what we need to do. We need to connect with people and show up. And so, uh, how's that, mate? In a nutshell. <laughs> what brings you to today? <laughs> wow, what a story, man. I, I really connected to your story um, in the part of you, um, you know, leaving Australia, everything that you've ever known, and then just setting up shop in Singapore. And now you've transformed all these people's lives and you're about to transform a whole lot more. Kudos to you, man, for you know, taking the leap. Some people would never really escape outside their comfort zone. Some people would never dare to dream. Now, you did mention that one of the kids mentioned that to you, hugged you for 10 minutes, um, you know, and then and, and that also spoke to me in as much as I thought when kids went to school, you know, when they learned their uh, algebra or their Pythagoras theorem, you know, they are being exposed to life skills that they can utilize and they can dream and you know um, you know be creative in their own way they how how is that not helping then if um after you having the worst speech ever you've actually encouraged somebody else to dream <laughs> well well said great question mate and i appreciate what you share thank you you know it's it's enjoyable i mean that's life life should be enjoyable uh and it starts to get enjoyable when we say yes uh, that's what i believe and and i guess that's the challenge when i look at youth that the limitations especially here in singapore you know i really feel for youth here and i feel for them because there's such a bias to academics and and it's almost that path, and I believe, you know, traditionally Chinese thinking, which, you know, they have some wonderful things about their culture, you know, when it comes to, you know, their great savers. Um, you know, not only that, you know, as far as family, it's so important, but there's still a reliance in today's age where, you know, if you don't do well at school, your future is doomed. And that pressure is immense on the kids in, especially, you know, in, in Asian culture. And, and I love... I guess the refreshing idea that in Australia, youth really, uh, you know, if you don't do well at school, there's so many other options. You really have that freedom and maybe they don't see it for themselves. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of youth, I guess, uh, you know, there's still the, the concerns about their future and everything. And I think that's, that's the thing. It's like, uh, you know, probably for us, you know, we, we were at, you know, 18, 17, 16 years old, and we are supposed to then be told what we're going to do for the rest of our life. I mean, I, I was given a book, in year 10 at school that had all these careers in it. And I remember looking through and it's almost like I, I had to pick one. I mean, if I had a, tried to map out a destiny of what my life looked like today, there's no way I would have guessed or assumed that this is what I would be doing. It's that we evolve. And, and I guess giving youth the space to know that, yes, academics important, you know, to get good results and university degrees and things are so important, you know, to, to carve out a path in that field. But then also to know you know, how do you be creative in that as well? Rather than just being a robot at the desk and doing the career, you're actually making an impact. You're making a difference. And so I feel there's a trend, there's a shift to that where schools now, especially here and in Australia, they're looking for excursions or trips that are more social enterprise trips where, where their journeys, where you know, they don't go to a country to feel sorry for them. They go there to bring their skill set to, to help in a place. And they take with them something that can last a lifetime. And I, I believe that's the seed we need to plant. I believe that's what our youth need. Uh, so how did I go and answer your question? <laughs> you, you, you're doing fantastic, man. You, you've probably done this over and over and over again. And I'm just sitting here captivated by your stories and, um, you know, your value that you're offering us today. Now, before I asked the question earlier on, you were sort of starting to uh, play around with one other concept that's really pivotal and very important to the business world, which is the concept of connecting, all right? Mm -hmm. Connecting with whoever you are, wherever you are, and the people that are around that. Now, in your world right now, you know, it is actually the best reminder of what happens when you simply connect. You went there, you did not know anyone, but now you are bringing people back home um, as a way of explorers, bringing in and boosting the economy, whichever way you're going to be doing it. Now, opportunities to experience, um, you know, speaking in many countries, which you've been given as well. You've also had coaching clients from all over the world, and they have been in awe with the way that you've created um, the, the relationships around 
you and how you actually have uh, managed to carve out your own niche um, that wasn't ever there. Now, can you explain to us why it really, really is important to know how to connect with other individuals um, at, a, at a personal level? What a fantastic question. This is, this is the key. This is the key I know that you get, Prosper. I really sense that. It's that we can use technology in so many ways to make our life easier. And the challenge I have is that a lot of businesses focus so much on the technology, they take the person out of it. And, you know, I'm not saying, and I'm no expert when it comes to technology, I'm not saying that it's not a good idea to have autoresponders and blah, blah, blah. But, but some of the biggest opportunities that have come my way have been from email to this, email to getting on a call. Let's sense the person. Let's see who they really are, really get an appreciation for, for where we connect. And, you know, it couldn't be more truer in a place like Asia. Uh, so one of the, the biggest clients that I work alongside now is, uh, is someone that sends about 20,000 youth abroad each year for summer camps and things. And he's a small player in China. You know, we, we've got billions of people. And one of the things that's, that's really cool is I, I took a trip to China and met with him in person. Now, what's really funny is I'm a, I'm a car nut. I love cars. And we spoke about what we did for 20 minutes and we spoke about cars for about three hours. Now, one of the things is I can't do that with email contact. You know, to, to have that opportunity to be ourselves in a conversation it really brings an authentic relationship where anything can come from that. And, and that's where all these things have evolved. It's because he was, he was able to, to sense trust and trust in any relationship, especially in, in Asian culture, is everything. And I, and I struggle sometimes to see how you can do that, you know, just by you know, playing the space of autoresponders and blah, 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 blah. But they're also a great thing to follow up when people like me forget to put things in their diary. So therefore, I know everything plays its part, mate. So, but yeah, I believe connecting, connecting is something that we, we forget and, and we think our form of connection is liking a Facebook post when in actual fact, we need to come back to this stuff and we need to teach our kids to come back to this stuff. Let's, uh, you know, let's not text, let's have a real conversation. I think it's so important. Love your thoughts on that too, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. You see, the thing is, the thing is, um, I read somewhere where it says the only difference between you and a caveman is the car that you drive. Since you're a car buff, I thought I'd throw that one in. <laughs> um, in as much as our ancestors used to communicate with each other to tell, um, you know, the other crew whether there's danger or where food is or where they've stored the food. And they use different sorts of communication. It was probably through hieroglyphics or drumming or, you know, just literally storytelling like you have been today. So obviously communication hasn't been taken away from us at a core level, even though we've got phones and smartphones that are dumb enough not to keep a battery. What would you do? When you, when you really need to speak to somebody, all right? So that that is actually a phenomenon that you you have those stories and you've got that experience to share. And especially with the youth, um, because they are future leaders and, and they are the people that are actually going to be taking over whatever it is that we've created or ruined further. So you... <laughs> <laughs> well, <said. laughs> so your job is a crucial job there, sir. Now, somebody might have been watching this and obviously is interested in knowing how else they can get a hold of you and um, or maybe how they can be involved in whatever it is that you're doing, you know, um, either be coached by you or just, you know, speak to somebody who's from Perth and yeah, <laughs> something like that. How can people get a hold of you there, uh, Andrew? You know, I, I think that it's the best way is Facebook. I love Facebook for this reason. I mean, that's how we connected. And I love that you sent that private message. You took the time, uh, you know, just to, to have my name at the top of the, the message. I mean, that's something that's pretty pivotable that gets just forgotten in that digital nomad world. It's not, <laughs> calling someone by their name. Who would have thought? <laughs> yes. Well, obviously, they say somebody's name is the best music that they can ever hear. So thank you so much for your time as well to receive respond to it but we still need to know how people can get a hold of you absolutely so facebook uh, is, a, is a wonderful place uh website's just currently being created um but andrewdavy.com.sg uh is uh, the website uh when it's all up and running 
Great stuff. Well, to the viewer that's watching this at the moment now, look at where Andrew is. And also, if you do quite know my story of having come across from Zimbabwe with nothing but a backpack full of hopes and dreams, but we've managed to create all of this around us, all through giving off of ourselves and actually communicating, creating and relating to the people that we really want to be in touch with or the people that would help propel our businesses further you might have a phone in front of you right now watching this video or you might be watching it on your laptop behind that screen behind that piece of equipment is a person like you and me that has blood flowing through their veins and they are yearning for you to actually reach out and just say hi. Now, Andrew, I cannot thank you enough. Obviously, you would have been doing crazy things or enjoying your life there in Singapore, uh, but you took your time to you know, share with us your experience, your life story, and your path and your work, which is now enlightening the youth of tomorrow. Thank you so much for connecting with us. And thank you. Thank you for opening the space up for people to do this. I, I think it's really cool what you do and uh, mate, keep doing what you're doing. Love your story. Love everything about what you share. Thank you. You're right. Thank you so much, man. You're welcome. Yeah.